Welcome back Netcode Hub community. In today's video, we are diving into the exciting world of Docker and MongoDB. If you have been following our series, you know we've already covered how to run .NET Web API with SQLite, SQL Server, and PostgreSQL. Today, we are taking it a step further by showing you how you can connect your .NET Web API to MongoDB, all within a Docker container. And imagine you are working on a project that involves handling a large amount of unstructured data, like logs, real-time analytics, and IoT data. MongoDB, a NoSQL database, is perfect for this scenario due to its flexible schema design. By running your .NET Web API connected to MongoDB in a Docker container, you will ensure a consistent environment across all stages of development, testing, and production. This setup allows you to quickly spin up instances, making your development workflow much more efficient and scalable. So let's have a look on how we can do this. Before we jump right into Visual Studio, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to Netcode App channel for more exciting tutorials. Also, check out our previous videos on connecting .NET Web API to different databases. Let's get coding. So we need to create a project in here. So click on create new project once you launch a Visual Studio. Since we're going to be working with Web API, it means we have to go in for ESP.NET Core Web API, give it a name and I'll choose location. Now click on next. And here we're going to add Docker container support. So you see I have selected this already. And this is going to generate a Docker file for us, so we need not to create it ourselves. That's a nice of ASNet Core team and our Visual Studio. That's amazing. So let's click on Create to get this um, project created with Docker support. So now that our package, our project is ready, let's go and install a package, and that is what we're going to be using in this. Right click on Dependencies. Let's go to Add or Manage NuGet Packages. Under Browse tab, we're going to install mongodb.browser. That is a mongodb.driver, not browser, driver. So that is a package in here. And now let's install this. So after this has installed successfully, let's go to our appsetting.json file. And in here, we're going to specify our connection string, our MongoDB database name, and the collection name. I've already made a video on how to integrate MongoDB in your application. You know, in order to do that, maybe I have a, I'll put a link in the video description so you can check that. In order for you to work with MongoDB, you need to provide the database name as always. You need to provide the connection string as always. But in here, you need to also add collection name. So that is what we need to do. And I have prepared this beforehand. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paste this in here. So you see we have our connection string and the name here is default connection. And we have a Mongo port of 27017. Now with this, we are not using Logos server because we're going to connect this in our image. So that's a Docker image. And in there, we're going to specify this Mongo server in there. So that's the reason why we have this Mongo and we have the port specified. There's a database, so we're going to create a database and maybe um, what's the name that we're going to be using? My Mongo database. Then collection here, let's also use my Mongo collection. Okay, so now that we are done with this, Let's create a DB context class for this. So let me add a folder, name it as data. Then I'm going to create a DB context. But before we do that, we need to create a model. So maybe I'll put the model here. And now this context is going to be about product. So let me put a model of product.
So once you have this, in order for us to use or uh, work with uh, Mongo, Mongo has specific or special attribute that we can specify on top of each properties. So you see from here, we want to get an ID. So with this ID, we need to use this BSN ID and our BSN representation we have as an object type. And now these, these go to the ID. When it comes to the name, we have it as a BSN element. We have BSN element for description and our quantity. So if we see it is using um, mongodb.bsn. So we have to include the namespace in here. Or oh, that is the, the, the reference. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create a DB context. So in the same folder, let me just create another class. And this class, I'm going to name it as product DB context. This is uh, related or specific to product. Product DB context. Now in the product DB context, we want to have a Mongo connection in here. Okay. So with this, I also have prepared this beforehand. It's quite simple. Now, you know, we have provided a, a collection name, a database name, and a connection string in the app settings. So we need to grab that. We can use the I options to map it. By here, we're not using that. We are getting the section. And then here, we have the section name and the key. So we want to grab the value for each. Now, you see from here, we get a connection string. And now this is coming from the configuration. We've injected it in here. And now for our configuration, you want to get a connection string as a default connection. We get a section named as database from, this is the key from a section name as MongoDB. And when you go to the app setting, that is what we have. So we are getting this as a key from this section. We get the same thing from the database and now from collection. Okay, so in here, we want to, or we need to specify our Mongo client. We need to grab the database and I'm passing name in there. After that, we want to create a collection. Now, product collection. What is the name that you want to give it to? So you can see we have this collection name specified. And that is for product. So this is going to be for product collection name. Okay. So now that we have this, um, the next thing I need to do here is register this in the program.cs file by using a singleton. So let's go to our program.cs. And then in here, let's register. So you can see we have beta.services.asingleton. Then you specify a DB contest that we have created. Aside from that, we need to create a product endpoint. So in here, and um, this is the same as the controller, minima API. So let's go to our data folder again. And I'm going to add another class. And I'm going to make it as product endpoint. And you know, in working with MongoDB, it's different, quite different from working with the SQL, PostgreSQL Server, and um, SQLite. Here, there are some few changes that you need to do. Anytime that you want to do insert, you want to perform all the CRUD. Okay. So I've already prepared this as hand to, so you need not to worry about this. Now you need to make this as a static. Then let's create a class and I name it as map product endpoint. So map product endpoint, we takes in the I endpoint um, route builder. We have to create a general group for all. So let's specify that on line seven. And that is going to be API slash product. After that, let's create our first endpoint and that's going to be get all. So in that, we have our product DB contest class created. So that is get all. And I would get all. What are we doing in here? We are injecting a DB context in this. And after we do that, we need to get a product the two list and now we want to get return. But before we do this, this should come from using MongoDB.driver. So let's make sure we have 
this using statement in there. So using MongoDB, the driver. And now here, we need to download or install this OpenAI. So let's go to NuGet and now let's download this. We make sure we install this to our project. All right. So when we go back, we have no issue. All that you need to do here is, let's say, if you're going to pick it up, yes. All right, so the next endpoint that we're doing here, so here you can see we are getting the product list and our return. So that is a get all product. Now, aside from get all product, we need to have get product by ID because you want to specify, you want to create a crowd operation for this. So let's have the next one, and that will be get product by ID. So you can see we need to specify an ID in here, and now it's going to return either product or not found. So when you found it, we're going to return it. If you, in case you couldn't, then you want to return this not found. And that we need to pass in our DB contest and our ID. We need to build a filter. That is a unique thing about MongoDB. You need to build a filter in here, and that is where you need to make specify your um, parameters in it. Then you're going to use that as a filter for this. So you can see here we are saying filter dot. Then we want to find you want to grab the ID. Then here you can see we are find the ID which corresponds with this ID that we want to find. And after building this filter, all that you need to do is to copy this filter into product.find and now pass it on. We can extract first or default from it. Now the next thing that we need to do is we are going to update it. So how do you update? We can use update one, replace one async, um, and map ted to handle this so we are also having a group of map as put that's for update and we're going to return either okay or not found now in that we have our product as an incoming we have an id and there's our context so you can see we want to replace it and now we want to find the id which corresponds with the id coming in as a parameter then when we have it replace it with this product and in case it's successful then want to return okay else not found now the next thing that we're going to do here is we need to add product how do we add product we need to use the map post so we have a map post and now we add in our product from our context in here we insert our product then you want to get what we have inserted and in our return. And we give it a name as create product. Now, last one is delete. That ends up our crowd operation. So for the delete, we need to make a search. And here, we search it by the ID. When we have it, go and delete it. After deleting, check if the count is greater than zero, if the operation is successful, then you want to return OK else we can return not found we give it a name as delete product so this is the same as using the scaffolded version um, but here the logic here differ from using sql or any other database okay so now that we have this the next thing that we need to do is we need to map this how do we do this we can do that from our program.cs file so let's go in there and now in here, we need to use app.mapproduct endpoint. That is all we need to do to get this map. Okay, so we have it map. Now let's also add a call since we're going to be um, building this and accessing this outside the Docker. We need to add call, so let's do that. We can add a service, builder.service. Then we're going to add calls. So with this course, you allowing any origin, any method, and uh, any header. After we've um, created this, we need to use this. So we can grab this. We go to the app, 
and now here we're going to say app dot use call that we have built and now specify the name in there okay now you can go and check our docker file which is or which was created when you created this project and i could see we have it so we're not going to touch this it has everything that it needs to build this or to turn this package or this project into an image so maybe we can expose only port 8080 or port 80 for http access then the next thing that we have to do is to create our docker compose file so in the right click on the project now let's add this new item and now that's the jml file and it's going to be docker compose so there's a there's a file that we need to run our image and also the mongodb server so that they can connect and start working i have also um prepared this beforehand so we need to specify the service and now from the service we're going to be using two services in here we need our web api service we need our mongo um service as well that's going to be our server and maybe we're going to have our network service and volumes okay so in here let's have the first service so you can see we have a web api and we have our build we have our context and now we need to specify the docker file and that is what we have in here so we did the docker file that we have created and aside from that we need to specify the image of this api so i'm saying my api mongo latest then we need to specify the ports let's specify one port in here we want to map 5003 to port 80 as the http access let's specify environment and here we need to expose http and also we need to have environment and development default to be set to production and then we have a connection string and that's the default connection and here we have mongodb and that is mapping to this mongo and now we have a default um, port let's specify database name as my mongo database and also the collection name here as my mongo collection this api will depend on mongo and it should be in the network of my custom network that is for the api now let's see for the mongo what can we do we need to also specify the mongo section and after that so mongo will be under under the services so we have our mongo and now this mongo there is the image it is coming from the mongo latest then there is a port 27017 as a default port then we have our volume specified and the same networks so bear in mind that these two projects must be or these two must be in the same network on the same network that's great so we make sure we um provide the network in here if we do not provide it there's going to be a default network created but well we want to make sure we have what we need so we are creating it ourselves now let's restrict our service our network to internal access and create our volume so we have our network and now with this network we're going to have a, a, a external as force it's going to be internal then we have our volume also specified in here so you see that in here we have our service created which service contains our web api and our mongodb aside from that we have our network then we have our volume also specified that is what we need in our docker compose file okay so after we have created this we need to download docker desktop so there is a docker desktop so maybe i have some default images in here and all of these are unused maybe you can remove or can clear these images okay now aside from that 
we need to if you are not having this then i think um you can install this as usual you can install this from this link maybe docker docs.docker.com slash uh, maybe docker or desktop install windows to get this for windows if i click on uh, docker desktop i can have a version for all the os including linux including mac os and the windows yeah so that is what docker desktop you see we have them here so you can download them based on your operating system so now that we have this we need to move our docker file and our docker compose file out of the root so go to your project right click on it and then go to open folder in and file explorer now in here you can see we have our docker file and the compose file inside we want to move it outside to where we have the solution so they are here okay so now that we are done with this we can go ahead and now build that project but before that let's rebuild the project itself so let's rebuild solution all right so that is great you can see once succeeded now we pull our package manager console now let's start the magic so we're going to start docker desktop so docker the desktop compose then let's first build this so we're going to build this project first before we run All right, and that is done. So after this has finished the building, what we're gonna do here is we're not going to run that. So we're gonna say builder.docker compose, then app. So if you're not having the image of the Mongo, it's going to pull this. After doing that, it's going to create network. As you can see from here, it's created a network. Then, so you can see we have our network, a database, and our app itself. And after that, it's going to get the project run. So let's see. Now it is listed on the port bound to 80. And that is our port that we specify in a Docker Compose file. So if I open the Docker Compose file from here, we had the port of 5003. So let's bring our browser and I'll try to access that. So we have our HTTP, then we have our, that's going to be localhost and now swagger. So this should open. Okay. Let's make sure. All right, so yeah, this is not working in here, as you can see. We are not getting our swagger. Let's go to our project again. We go to our program.cs, and now with this, okay, so under development stage, you should use, maybe we can remove this. Then, let's comment this HTTPS redirection. Now let's build this project again. So you make sure let's also access check the docker let me just bring it here so this exposing port 8080 we can make it of 80 and now here that's an 80 so it just should match okay let's do this so stop and let's build this again So that is done. 
we're going to up this okay so let's try to access this again so this is the browser again now here we're going to say http then we're going to have a local host and then the port is 5003 and here we need to access the swagger ui now let's see and we are in so let's see if we can we are connected to our database as a mongodb yes we are now let's try to add record so we have an issue because this string must be 24 so we can remove this as 90 it's going to be provided automatically so we're adding record we've added now maybe let's say this is net code then also added now we can check we have records in here and you can perform update delete as well wow we did it you've now mastered how to run your dotnet web api connected to your mongodb using docker this setup is now is incredibly powerful providing you with a robust scalable and consistent environment that is perfect for handling large volumes of unstructured data thank you for following along if you enjoyed this tutorial please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to check out our previous videos on connecting web api to sqlite sql server and our postgres sql keep coding stay curious and i'll see you in the next video